The following lesson is linked to learning outcome 2, reading and viewing. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to explain the meaning of a wide range of written, visual, audio and audiovisual texts. Learners should be able to recognize the writer's and or the character's viewpoint and give supporting evidence from the texts. Hi, I'm Charlotte, and I've been taking you through this series of lessons on getting into poetry. So far we have looked at how poetry evolved from the earliest times, the structure of poetry, and different forms of poems. In today's lesson, I would like to show you exactly how a poet manages to convey his or her message most effectively. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify narrative elements in a poem, and comment on the tone and intention of a poem. You may have noticed that when we define the categories of poetry, we refer to various elements of narrative writing to describe their characteristics. Narration is the act of telling, or the story being told. These are some of the main elements of narrative writing. Poetry began as narration, the passing down of stories through rhythmical speech. Now, although we only refer to a poem where a real story truly unfolds in poetic form as a narrative poem, most poems have a narrative base. It is therefore important that we examine some narrative elements and how they apply to poetry. Now, let's start by looking at the speaker. The speaker is also known as the voice of the text. The speaker is the persona that we are listening to. Sometimes the poet is telling his or her own story, but never assume that the poet and the speaker are one and the same. The poet may take on the persona of an orphan or an abused woman or even an abandoned animal in order to convey his or her message more effectively. So when you first read a poem, you should ask yourself the following questions. Who am I listening to? What is he or she like? These questions will assist you in identifying the speaker in the poem. The poet can of course invent more than one character if, for example, the inclusion of dialogue would enhance the text. Now, the next element that we will investigate is the setting of the poem. The setting refers to the time period, the place, or the physical environment in which the poem is placed. Now, as we have discussed previously, every poem is influenced by what happens in the world around it. So, the setting is very important when we try to work out the meaning of the poem. Now, the setting is often hinted at in the poem, so write down the clues as to what the setting might be as you read the poem. Narrative refers to a story being told. This implies that there should be a storyline or a plot. Now, although this is true of a narrative poem, most poems per definition deal with emotions. Now, this means that the storyline can be distorted by the poet's own opinion, or the events can be written out of sequence, or there might not even be a storyline at all, only the expression of an idea. The primary purpose of a poem is to communicate something to the reader. In order to get the maximum benefit from poetry, we need to identify the tone and intention of the poet. Now, although we are going to examine these two aspects separately, it's important that you remember that tone and intention are very closely linked. Now, let's start by looking at tone. Much of what you say depends on how you say it or your tone of voice. Tone in a poem depends on two different things. Tone depends on the writer's attitude towards the audience, and the writer's attitude about the subject. Tone refers to the way the words sound to the reader. 
Are they angry, resigned, bored, excited or sad? The subject of the poem can give us clues about the tone of the poem. A poem about the death of a loved one would never have a light-hearted tone. Now the specific words or diction that the poet has chosen can also indicate the tone of the poem. The stench of the city, the smell of the city, the aroma of the city. The word stench carries a negative connotation and the word smell carries a more neutral connotation while aroma has a positive tone of admiration. Another device that is commonly used to convey a strong viewpoint on a subject is irony. Verbal irony is the practice of saying one thing when you mean another. You are saying the opposite of what you mean. Now let's look at an example of what I mean. Here is a famous example of understatement from Shakespeare's play Macbeth. Lady Macbeth says, a little water clears us off this deed. As the play progresses, we realize that they cannot rid themselves of their deed or their guilt as easily as they could wash the blood off their hands. Another example of verbal irony is overstatement or hyperbole. This happens when a comment is exaggerated. Look at these lines from the poem City Johannesburg by Mungani Wale Serote. Here the poet talks about his passbook as being his life. Now this is obviously not strictly true. However, if you look at the context of the poem and the political atmosphere of the time, this hyperbole emphasizes the strict enforcement of past laws as well as the people's feelings of helplessness. This brings us to the next interesting aspect of poetry. Now what the poet is trying to do with a poem is known as intention. The poet's intention is what he or she is trying to achieve by writing a poem. In a way, it seems pretentious to imagine that any person can determine the poet's intention. However, every poem conveys a message. So here are some clues that will help you when you are trying to determine the poet's intention. Think about the life experiences of the poet, where the poet was at the time that the poem was written, and your own understanding of the world or yourself from the interaction with the poem. We have already shown you an example of hyperbole in the poem City Johannesburg. Now let's take another look at the poem and see if we can find the poet's intention. City Johannesburg, this way I salute you. My hand passes to my back trousers pocket or into my inner jacket pocket for my pass, my life, Joburg City. My hand, like a starved snake, rears my pockets for my thin, ever lean wallet, while my stomach groans a friendly smile to hunger, Joburg City. My stomach also devours coppers and papers, don't you know? Joburg City, I salute you. When I run out or roar in a bus to you, I leave behind me my love my comic houses and people, my dongas and my ever-whirling dust, my death that's so related to me as a wink to the eye, Joburg City. I travel on your black and white roboted roads, through your thick iron breath that you inhale at six in the morning and exhale from five noon, Joburg City. That is the time when I come to you. When your neon flowers flaunt from your electrical wind, that is the time when I leave you. When your neon flowers flaunt their way through the falling darkness on your cement trees. And as I go back to my love, my dongas, my dust, my people, my death, where death lurks in the dark like a blade in the flesh, I can feel your roots anchoring your might, my feebleness in my flesh, 
in my mind, in my blood, and everything about you says it. That is all you need of me. Joburg City, Johannesburg. Listen when I tell you, there is no fun, nothing in it. When you leave women and men with such frozen expressions, expressions that have tears like furrows of soil erosion, Joburg City, you are like death. Joburg City, Johannesburg. Joburg City. The poet wanted to criticize the apartheid government and its policies of forcing black people to live in separate areas and forcing them to carry passbooks with them at all times. Because at the time people who criticized the government openly could be imprisoned by criticizing in the form of a poem, Mongani Wale Serote found another way of making his feelings known. I hope you now have a clearer understanding of how to comment on the tone and intention of a poem. Now let's recap what we have learned today. The tone refers to the way in which the words sound to the reader and this provides us with a great deal of information about the mood of the speaker. We discussed how verbal irony and diction can be used to indicate a specific tone in a poem. We looked at elements of narrative writing and how they apply to poetry, including speaker, setting and character. We also mentioned that whilst it is impossible to say beyond a doubt what the original intention of a poet was, that there may be some clues that could show us what the intended message of the poem is. By now you should have a fair overview of the various elements that contribute to poetry. Thank you for joining me today and be sure to join me for the last lesson in our series when I will show you how to arrange your own poetry slam. Bye-bye. <laughs>